doctor is in. Time now for Doc Rob, your concierge for better living, only on CannabisRadio.com. It's time to check in with Doc Rob and the concierge for better living. We take a real, raw, inside look at healthier living while sharing great ideas and improvements for a better quality of life. The Concierge for Better Living will help informed, intrigued, and interested listeners like you make better choices for yourselves and your loved ones. CannabisRadio.com proudly presents The Concierge for Better Living with your host, Doc Rob. Hello and good day. This is Doc Rob, your concierge for better living at CannabisRadio.com. Another wonderful day. Happy to do another wonderful podcast. I'm really refreshed and recharged. I uh, had my first vacation recently in a long time. And I, I, I highly recommend if you can get a vacation, <laughs> take one. But I, I know that's jokingly, but I went to Burning Man. And for those that don't know, you should. Check it out. Look up Burning Man. Look at the photos. Look at the art. It's an amazing experience that takes place for a week in the desert in Nevada where there's absolutely nothing, a seabed, a dead seabed, a desert goes for miles, and all of a sudden this city arises over a couple weeks, and 70,000 people come in, and there's rows and camps and concerts and events, and you can't, it's, it's overstimulating if you try to see it all. In fact, some of the people I spoke to have been there for many years, so you can only see about 20%, 30% of Burning Man if you try. And I think that's one of the first things. You can't try to see it all. you got to do the best and, and just be open to the experience. And I bring that up not just because of the vacation part, but because it correlates with today's topic about money. You know, one of the interesting things, you know, that I, I found from Burning Man was that there really isn't a dollar or sale by capitalist kind of uh, approach in this environment. The only things you can spend money on once you're there is basically ice and coffee. Everything else you either bring in yourself or someone gives you or gifts you or you trade for it. So it goes back to my roots in anthropology and cultural lifestyles of you got to help out your neighbor. You got to look out for your neighbor. You got to, you know, see what, you know, that the dollar doesn't always mean much. If you have a food and they have water, if you share a little bit of each, you guys are both doing pretty good. And I love that mentality. And, and that was one of the things that I found to be extremely exciting. Aside from the fact that when you're there, if you're hungry, you eat. If you're tired, you sleep. If you want to take a walk, you take a walk. You're, you're not really on that nine to five schedule. And it does take a little time to get that way, uh, to get comfortable with that. But it's really a lovely experience. I highly recommend it for everyone. And there were times where I wanted to say, oh, this would be great to promote this product, or this would be great to promote this company here to this audience. And then I had to keep reminding myself, this is not that kind of environment. There's no real branding. There's no you know, corporate recognition. There's none of that going on. And it was quite refreshing. Now, with that being said, we're still living in, you know, for the most part, people listening in the U.S., capitalism, the dollar is still king. We look at money every day, but you know, when you talk about cannabis, because I'm going to bring this right back to you know, people used to exchange their fruits and their vegetables. They used to exchange their livestock. This was a much of a barter culture back in the day. You know, I see now people are saying, you know, with plants and homegrown vegetables and co-ops and how to bring this all together so that communities can do better, so people can live healthier. And, you know, we're not all, you know, all for the rich and, and leave the poor without any help. And, you know, forgetting that for a moment, when I got into the cannabis space from a business standpoint, I was always in it from a health standpoint and a medicine standpoint and a little bit in the recreational standpoint. I personally don't feel euphoria and feeling good is a negative side effect. So I don't think that's a bad thing. But, um, you know, one of the things that caught my attention early on, I attended uh, the Cannabis Cup High Times event in Colorado on 420 a couple of years ago. Actually, the first year it was legal, recreational in this Colorado. And I want to say a couple of quick things about that conference. You know, the conference was very friendly. I've been to beer con you know, things where you know, everyone goes out and, and tries different beers and 
different concerts where alcohol's there, and people get rowdy. There are fights. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on. But I was at this High Times Cannabis Cup, and everybody just seemed to have a nice big smile on their face. They were friendly. They were just enjoying the experience. And one of the things I saw that was really good was security was very pronounced, but yet they weren't very aggressive. You didn't feel intimidated by them. So today, to talk about money, cash in the cannabis business, security, things like that, I bring my buddy, my friend Michael Julian from MPS Security on as a guest today. Mike, it's great to have you on as a guest. Thanks for taking the time to be on the show. It's great to be here, Doc Rob. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and, and as I said, you basically, it's your company, MPS, you've done security, I'm sure. Give me a little background on your company. I know it wasn't just cannabis. I know you guys are doing a lot more than that, but I, I know that's where our paths cross, but I know you do so much. Well, give us a little background on MPS security. Sure. Uh, well, my father uh, founded our company, the, the parent company, National Business Investigations, in 1967 after uh, coming out of the military and law enforcement. And he started NBI, and under one name and one umbrella also provided uh, security. So we did investigations and security. I grew up in the business, so you know, it's what I've done my whole life. And the investigation side, it's corporate, legal investigations, fraud, uh, theft, that sort of thing. Not, not much in the cheating spouse sort of investigation way thing you see on TV. And then the security was, was always uniform security and plain clothes, executive protection for celebrities and corporate executives and so forth. So I grew up, you know, around this. Um, you know, I remember playing on my dad's floor in his office in Fullerton, California, uh, when I was just a little kid. It, it just, it's something I've been exposed to my whole life. It's the only thing I've ever really done as a career. So, you know, after 48 years, we became pretty good at what we do, obviously, through trial and error and, and learning and experience. And a couple of years ago, I saw a potential because the cannabis industry is relatively unsophisticated because it's brand new, obviously. And uh, I thought, you know, this there, there is going to be a lot of crime. There's going to be a lot of issues because you're talking about a high-value product and a whole lot of cash. And I thought, I'm going to uh, start a separate company, MPS International, and I'm going to use everything that we know and that have perfected in the industry of, of security. I'm going to apply it within the cannabis um, world, and uh, it has been wildly successful. Yeah, it's great. I mean, I think that's definitely needed. I felt secure at this, you know, these big conferences, and I'm never one to, you know, to feel intimidated, you know, growing up in New York and going to a lot of big social events and lots of different neighborhoods. But when you're talking about people walking into like a conference, per se, that's mostly cash because, you know, there's so much issue still in the banking system with even credit card processors right now shutting down that people are mostly dealing with cash and so even if i want to walk in and buy some stuff from the show or at the show i'm usually carrying a, a pretty big wad in my pocket so i mean obviously i want to feel safe and secure and you know that's definitely important but outside of that i, I i'm sorry i keep having flashbacks to liam neeson and taken right now and the kind of security you guys do with uh -huh. celebrities as well and i know you guys do that role which is pretty awesome and, I, and no need to name drop. Everyone just knows you've been in the business that long. You've dealt with some of the, the higher profile people that are out there. But, um, but what about you know, some of the other aspects of, of the security in cannabis, aside from the trade shows? What else are you doing? Sure. Well, first, let me, let me, let me just give you some, a little perspective on the trade shows and how that's different. There's, there's kind of two, two angles that we have to do here in dealing with the cannabis world. One is the very proactive, aggressive sort of protective security like we do in the grow operations and the dispensaries and so forth, where we're actually protecting the employees, the cash, and the product from the bad guys who want to get that stuff. Right. Um, the other side is we, when we do events, we've done all the, the cannabis cups in Denver. We've done the Hemp Fest in Seattle. We've done tons of, of these uh, cannabis-related conferences and trade shows, and the great thing is there's two types. There's the business to business. So you're talking about professionals that are there to learn and, and you know, uh, network and so forth because they're business owners. So they're very professional. Uh, so there's really no issues. And then you're talking about the, the business to consumer. So the, the, the cannabis cup itself is very much business to consumer. My good friend who I grew up with in Colorado, uh, Chris Hagaseth, who owns Green Man, is always there and they exhibit and they usually win several prizes. All of the big dispensers 
dispensaries are there, you know, getting exposure for their business and so forth. And the consumers, not just last year as much, but the year before, they had a lot of free samples. So there was a lot of people walking around that had really enjoyed the free samples. And the great thing about these people were way more reactionary than proactive because, you know, I've been going to concerts about my whole life. I've been doing security at, you know, big events my whole life. And there's usually tension and egos and, uh, you know, people not getting along. And at the Cannabis Cup, you walk around and if somebody bumps into you, they immediately excuse themselves and say, I'm sorry. And there, there was no issues, no fights. Everybody just kind of got along. But there's still a potential for issues, especially medical issues. When, when people got a little bit too high, they might pass out or something. So we help with the medical side of things. But anyway, that's a little perspective on what we do and how we do it in the cannabis world uh, as far as the physical security. But to delve a little deeper into what we do, we, we do the physical security, obviously, with armed and unarmed security officers. We also do transportation of product and cash. Uh, we've got, uh, I mean, everybody's seen our big armored trucks with a five-foot pot leaf on the side. Um, they've been, you know, it's been spotlighted on Bloomberg News and CNBC and everything like that. So we kind of, that's kind of where our, our, our fame came from, at least our, our highest amount of visibility, uh, our great big armored trucks with the pot leaf. So we do the transport of cash and product. We do the electronic board, the grows and the dispensaries, the, the security cameras and so forth, access control, you know, the big heavy doors with the keypad or the swipe card or something to let people in and out you know, consultations and training for employees to be security-minded. And then I, because of my background, do a lot of the uh, risk assessment and security plans for the actual application process. So when a new state opens up, like Nevada, I did several uh, applications. They would say, hey, we're going to apply to get a license here. And But as part of this, it's mandated that we have a very in-depth, detailed, thorough security plan stating what we're going to do for physical security, electronic security, and security standard operating procedures. So I would go in and, and uh, you know, get blueprints and take photographs and set up this whole security apparatus and then put it down on paper, and they would submit that with their application. And so far, everyone we've done, the applications have been approved. So I think we're doing something right. That's so awesome. that's, that's kind of the overview of what we do as a business. Very cool. Well, we're going to take a break, but I think that's awesome. I think, you know, people don't realize perhaps unless until they've been in a dispensary, you know, that it's not just a normal retail store. There are lots of safety measures, lots of cameras, lots of security. Um, you know, I think people, like when they walk into Colorado, for say, and, and they go into one of these legal, you know, more recreational stores, and they, they have to go through this, show your ID, here's all the cameras. You know, I think they're a little surprised or taken aback at how controlled and regulated that environment is and I, I think it's wonderful that you're able to make people feel secure in that and you know support the industry and making sure we don't have these you know, negative issues but also the negative press that comes with an emerging industry it's really great stuff we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come right back with more with mike julian from mps international mps security uh, this is doc rob your concierge to better living on cannabisradio.com and iHeartRadio. the concierge for better living will continue in a moment Dabber, hurry! Its temperature is shooting past a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. It's burning up! I'm afraid for this little guy, it's just too late. What caused the problem? Only Dr. Dabber can maintain the perfect temperature for a smooth-tasting, slower burn. This standard vaporizer lost all of its health benefits, sending it up in smoke. So you're telling me that most vapor pens burn so hot they produce smoke, not vapor? Correct! Keep away from those standard vaporizer pens and turn to Dr. Dabber, doctor's order. Less heat, <laughs> InternetMarketingNinjas.com is the online dojo of the highly trained and skilled Internet Marketing Ninjas. Disavow documents, reconsideration requests, Panda and Paywin penalties. Let our superior SEO ninjas confront all of your link-related issues. The Internet Marketing Ninjas are equipped to master any marketing exercise, content creation, authorship, link building, PPC, and more. Plus, build more buzz for your brand with our social media marketing strategy. Discover all that the Internet Marketing Ninjas can do for you. Visit the online dojo now at internetmarketingninjas.com. MJWellness.com, the largest medical marijuana community in the world. 
Connect with thousands of patients, doctors, industry leaders, and businesses through shared personal experiences along our worldwide network. Discover new therapies and benefits with content tailored to you. Come grow your network on mjwellness.com.